Here we're going to define for you the word transversal. Now in geometry, a transversal is really any line that crosses two lines and when they cross at two points. So here's one point and here's another point. This is transversal T and there's two lines there, line L and line M and they're crossing at two different points and so that makes T there a transversal. So the thing that we want you to understand is that when a transversal crosses two lines, eight angles are formed. There's four at one, one, two, three, four, and there's four at the other, five, six, seven, and eight. So to talk about how these angles that are formed relate to each other, we talk about them from one point to the other. And we have four different classifications. And as we speak about these pairs, one angle comes from one of the points and the other angle comes from the other point. So note how when you're looking at any two lines that you can always identify an upper left, an upper right, a lower left, and a lower right. The first uh, definition that we have for you then is called corresponding angles. So corresponding angle pairs are the pairs in the same relative position at the point, and there are four of them when a transversal is drawn. We can identify then the corresponding angles as angle one corresponds to angle five, and angle two corresponds to angle six, and angle three corresponds to angle seven, and angle four corresponds to angle eight. So that's how we talk about then corresponding angles. A corresponding angle pair would be one and five, or two and six, or three and seven, or four and eight. Those are the corresponding angles. The next category that we're going to talk about is called the alternate interior angle pairs. And when we talk about the alternate interior angle pairs, I want you to note that the interior angles are these angles right here the ones that are in between the two lines that are crossed. As we talk about the interior angle pairs, I need you to recognize that the alternate interior angles are going to be those that cross over the transversal as we're talking about the pairs. And so when we say that then, we say angle four and angle six are an alternate interior angle pair because notice those are interior angles, and we're talking about four coming from one point and six coming from the other point. As we talk about them, we're tr crossing over the transversal in order to identify them. So similarly, the other alternate interior angle pairs then would be angle three and angle five. So that's alternate interior angles. Now, since we've defined interior angles as those angles that are between the two lines, we can also talk about the angles that are outside those two lines, and so that would be the alternate exterior angle pairs. Alternate exterior angle pairs. So same idea, only now we're talking about the outside ones. If we talk about the outside ones, we're talking about angle one is alternate exterior to angle seven, and angle two is alternate exterior to angle eight. The last definition that we're going to talk about is referred to as consecutive interior angles. Now think about them this way, back again to talking about interior angles, and we're talking about consecutive interior angles. These share also another name called same side interiors. Same side of what? The transversal. We're saying then that the consecutive interior angles would be, as we talk about one point to another, angle four and angle five would be consecutive interior, angle three and angle six would be consecutive interior angles. So where we want to take this discussion is to say this, when parallel lines are cut by a transversal. Well, because of that whole discussion of transversals cutting two lines at two distinct points and forming four angle pair relations, we get to talk about those angle pair relations here as well. So let's go ahead and identify those eight angles again. This 
first point right here and this second point right here, we have the angle relations. So we have one, two, three, and four, and we have five, six, seven, and eight. Since we've identified those now, we can actually talk about corresponding angle pairs. Corresponding angles are congruent. So this is how we say it. When parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. So that literally is to say angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. And we can also say angle 2 then is congruent to angle 6. And we can also say angle 3 is congruent to angle 7. And angle 4 is congruent to angle 8. So corresponding angles are congruent when parallel lines are cut by a transversal. Let's find another relationship that we can identify. We can say it this way, when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Well, what are the alternate interior angles? We learned last time that angle 4 is alternate interior to angle 6. So angle 4 is congruent to angle 6. And angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. So the alternate interior angles are congruent. Likewise, we can say alternate exterior angles are congruent. And if we say that, then we're basically saying that the alternate exterior angles are congruent. So angle 1, then, is congruent to angle 7. And angle 2 is congruent to angle 8. And that's the statement that alternate exterior angles are congruent. Okay, there's one more set of angle pairs, and that's the consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior angles. Now, we say when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, consecutive interior angles, and you think I'm going to say are congruent, but I'm not. They're not congruent. They are instead supplementary. So if they're supplementary then, then we can say this. The consecutive interior angles, we're talking about angle 4 and angle 5. So we can say the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 is going to equal 180 degrees. And we can also say that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6 is equal to 180 degrees. So these are the four things that we want you to remember when we're talking about when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, we can say the corresponding angles are congruent. And there's four angle pairs that are going to be congruent to each other as a result of that. And then alternate interior angles are congruent. And you get two angle pairs from that relationship. And alternate exterior angles are congruent. And we get two of those. And then we get consecutive interior angles are supplementary, meaning their measures when we add them together will add to 180 degrees.